points that I didn't hear in the panel or the discussion is the whole simplification of structures. And I think that's a trend that is really happening coming out of the MNCs and your private equity as well. They're looking at how the environment is changing and probably today we should have the new tax plan released as well, which is gonna change the landscape again. So if you're talking to your US customer, there is a real drive for simplification of their structures, which I think is also driving what you're seeing in some of the shift of the jurisdictions. And I wondered if the panel had any views on that. Yeah, I might just jump in there, Nancy. I, I, I hear you um, that uh, there is a driver towards simplification for because of all the regulatory hurdles and the bank account issues, et cetera, et cetera. Keep the, keep the structure simple. Um, I do think, however, that um, the, the certain jurisdictions have such a strong um, offering in a particular direction, um, um, certain Cayman private equity, Bermuda and its reinsurance. I do think that certain certain vehicles are, are so well set up and established that, that they're going to be hard to displace, notwithstanding a driver for simplification. I, um, I don't see um, the US displacing the Cayman private equity market any anytime soon, but, but there will possibly be some erosion as Delaware and others get more traction. Um, uh, I do think that we'll continue to see, for example, uh, China, BVI, Cayman. I don't, I don't think we're going to, to, to be cutting out um, too many layers within the traditional structures for, for simplification, at least I hope. Um, as, as other uh, jurisdictions emerge to compete with the likes of Cayman, and that's something that, that maybe Matthias can talk about from a Hong Kong perspective or a Singapore perspective, I think that becomes interesting as, as other jurisdictions look to replicate the success of, of, of other uh, offshore traditional hubs. Um, yeah, and, and as Jonathan mentioned, there's some very, very strong incumbents in, in some of those places. I mean, Matthias, in terms of jurisdictional changes in your practice, or is this, this the, same, the same sort of patterns, same demands from clients, and the same sort of structures that you're using? Um, no, I mean, we, 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 we are starting to see an, uh, a move towards uh, mid-shore, as uh, you know, a term I, I, learned, I learned by reading the, the white paper, <laughs> <laughs> mid-shore and onshore. It's nothing new, of course, in Europe and, and, in, the U in, and in the US. In my, my European colleagues say, oh, we, you know, we haven't dealt with Caymans in, in, in years. And, and for me, that's surprising because I do 95% through Caymans. Um, but, but, but we see increasingly in, 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 in Hong Kong, and, and unrelated to BEPS and unrelated to, to, to CRS or anything, we see a, si a similar move because it, it has, for example, as advantages using, using uh, tax treaty, treaty benefits. So the, 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 the increase in, in, in the use of Hong Kong vehicles, as, as, as Vistra is the, is the first to know, is, is due to tax advantages investing into China, for example. And we see the same in, 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 uh, in Singapore, and Singapore has a head start to, to Hong Kong in terms of setting up, uh, on, uh, you know, setting up onshore, onshore vehicles and usable for, for onshore fund vehicles. Um, Hong Kong is, is a bit behind, but it will follow as well. So, so, so definitely a trend we're starting to see and, and we'll see much more in, in, in the future. Oh, no, do you want to pick up on something? I think that, uh, that one of the things indeed, I'm, I think the world is waiting to see what, what, what Trump is wanted to do in terms of a tax, uh, the tax bill and what kind of change he wants to put in and uh, wants to uh, execute. He first has to get the bill passed. I mean, so far he's not been so successful. But let's assume that in this case he's successful. I think the threat from a European perspective is uh, on the MNC side, the inversion rule. So that is what I was referring to, is not necessarily only BEPS, OCD, but Substance, the setup, uh, own people coming in. If you talk to your colleagues in Luxembourg, they say that they are busier than ever. But what we see is that with help to set up the, the, an, an own office for um, a Blackstone or uh, to, to keep it in more in the private equity space. So that is, that is definitely it is a threat. If you look at Ireland as a jurisdiction, they are gearing up to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, aligned uh, tax regime with the US. So as a jurisdiction, Ireland is originally an enhancement uh, jurisdiction, but they will, and they have changed their, their, their regulation will bow to, to go as well for the debt funds. So the debt funds will definitely land there. I think from a Luxembourg perspective, and sorry for the US managers, but if you want to attract European investors and you meet certain thresholds, you will be exposed to, exposed to the AFMD. So that is something, we try to keep it as simple as it is. But 
uh, and, and we try to do that as well, and they, clients want to have economy of scale, and we are flexible, et cetera, et cetera, but certain regulations you can't simply, you, you, you still can with parallel vehicles, uh, then, but then I think as a, from a manage, managerial perspective, you overcomplicate things. So yes, there are changes, and, and um, I think that, that US could move to a mere a core jurisdiction, but let's not forget that US is the biggest offshore center of the world, so that is, um, uh, depends where you are in the world. We had yesterday discussion where you are in the world, what is offshore, onshore, midshore. Uh, the, the lines are blurred, and that's, you know, as Jonathan, as Jonathan kind, of, kind of mentioned. Nancy, just to pick up on what you're saying in terms of simplification, the other thing I think that we see anecdotally as well, is, and this is kind of driven by regulation, is that the bottom of the market falls out or has falls out over a period of stages as there's more regulation kind of coming in as well. And I think that goes back to the chart that Jonathan showed where the overall kind of pot of offshore companies just gets that little bit smaller as, as the kind of bottom of that market falls away. Not necessarily a bad thing, but something to kind of consider and bear in mind.